Hi, this is the video on projectile motion uh, introduction. So we're going to talk about uh, the basic concepts of projectile motion. What is a projectile? What's the trajectory? How projectiles behave in the horizontal and vertical directions? Some examples of projectiles and then we're going to uh, do a practice problem on projectile motion. So let's start with the basics. A projectile is just an object launch, launched such that the only force acting is gravity. So a projectile is really just an object that is in free fall. In free fall, gravity is, uh, free fall means that gravity is the only force acting. A couple of assumptions that we make about projectiles is that the force of gravity is assumed to be constant, which is a good assumption near the surface of a planet. <coughs> We're talking about rockets going into a space, that's not a great assumption, but near the surface of the Earth, it's fine. Also, air resistance is going to be negligible. If we were to incorporate air resistance, our analysis would get much more complex. A few examples are, of projectiles are baseballs that have been pitched, batted, or thrown, a bullet that's been fired after it's left the barrel of the gun, a bus driven off of a bridge, an airplane moving in the air with its engines and wings disabled, and a runner in mid-stride, that is when they're momentarily out of contact with the ground. Um, really anything is a projectile if it's moving through the air and the only force acting on it is gravity. So, uh, the trajectory of a projectile is a parabola. All, all projectiles will have parabolic uh, paths. You can see that in the water here and here. Uh, before we talk about how projectiles work, let's think about an object fired with no gravitational force. So if we fire an object with no gravitational force, well, there are no forces acting on the object. So the net force equals zero, um, which means that our acceleration is also going to be equal to zero. So we have constant velocity motion. So for equal amounts of time, we'll travel an equal horizontal distance in this case, since we fire something horizontally. This is our inertial path. Uh, we can also think about an object that's dropped in a constant gravitational field. Here we have a red object that's dropped in our constant gravitational field. In this case, we have one force acting gravity. From Newton's second law, sum of the forces equals ma. There's only one force, so mg equals ma. Cancel out uh, mass, we get our acceleration is just equal to uh, the acceleration due to gravity, which means we have uniformly uniformly accelerated motion. And we're not going to travel at equal distances in equal amounts of times where our velocity is going to change by an equal amount in an equal amount of time. So our distance is going to increase quadratically. A projectile is a combination of these two motions. In the x direction, there is no acceleration because there are no x forces. The free body diagram is actually going to be the same as an object just dropped. It's just downward force equal to mg. So in the horizontal direction, we travel equal amounts of horizontal distance in equal amounts of time. In the vertical direction, uh, our velocity increases by a constant amount each equal amount of time. So when we combine those two, we get this yellow arc. Constant motion in the x direction, constant acceleration in the y direction. So. Let's take a look at this animation. This animation is nice because it breaks our velocity into its component vectors. In the x direction, notice that velocity vector stays at constant length. The x velocity stays at 100 meters a second. Our y velocity, however, changes because there's a downward acceleration. It changes by 10 meters per second each second, which is about the acceleration due to gravity. So this is what causes our overall uh, projectile trajectory, it's that y velocity changing with that x velocity being constant. So mathematically what that means is in our x direction we just 
analyze the motion like it's constant velocity motion. Speed or velocity equals displacement over time, our constant velocity equation. In the y direction, we have a constant acceleration of negative g, which on Earth is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So we can analyze it just like any old constant acceleration equation. We're going to use the SUVAT equations in the y direction. Here are our SUVAT equations. V equals u plus at. V squared equals u squared plus 2as. S equals ut plus 1 half at squared. S equals the average of u plus v times time. Uh, S equals vt minus 1 half at squared. And I added y subscripts just to, just to make sure that we're only thinking in the y direction. And that's it. Uh, so our overall strategy is going to be to resolve any vectors into our x and y components, horizontal and vertical, which is usually just going to be our velocities. We're going to identify the interval of interest in the projectile's trajectory. We'll list our givens and unknowns, and we'll do that in a t-chart up here, x direction and y direction. And then we'll use our constant velocity equations to analyze x, or SUVAT equations to analyze y. At the end, we might need to recombine, recombine our velocity vectors into a uh, resultant velocity. Um, one other important thing to note is uh, everything's broken into components here except time, which means if we solve for time in the x direction, we know it for the y direction. If we solve for time in the y direction, we know it for the x direction. That's going to be important for our problems. So let's do one. A baseball is thrown horizontally off the top of a 45.5 meter school building with an initial speed of 16.6 meters per second. Find the distance away that it lands, the time it takes to land, and the components of its final velocity. So I'm going to sketch out a little diagram. Now our object is launched with a horizontal initial velocity. So I'm going to call that uh, u. And it's going to take a parabolic arc to reach the ground. When it hits the ground, it's going to have some downward component of its velocity, v, y, and it's going to have some rightward component of its final velocity, v, x. Uh, we can also uh, think about the acceleration. That's straight down, negative 9.81 meters per second squared. We can think about the displacement in the x direction. It's going to be sx. And in the y direction, since we're going down, our displacement is going to be sy. So let's start by filling in our givens and unknowns. That's in y direction. In our x direction, uh, well, we know the initial velocity is horizontal. So that means our x velocity is known. Vx, so it's the same as ux, equals 16.6 .6 meters per second. I don't think we know the time it takes to hit the ground. And I don't think we know the displacement in the x direction. So those are two unknowns. In the y direction, well, we know the acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. We don't know the time. We do know the displacement in the y direction because it's thrown off a building that is 45.5 meters tall. Since it's going down 45.5 meters, Sy is negative 45.5 meters. We, we don't know the final velocity in the y direction, but we actually do know the initial velocity. Since it's thrown horizontally, our initial vertical velocity is zero. So v, y is unknown. Oops. Let's go back. Okay, so now we just need to solve. Uh, we're not going to be able to do the x direction because we only have one given, but we can do the y direction. Um, and we either need to solve for v, y, or t. I'm going to solve for v, y. So I need the equation that has a, s, u, and v. It's going to be this one, uh, v squared equals u squared plus 
2as. And remember, this is just in the y direction. So when I solve it, I get v equals square root of u squared plus 2as. And I can plug in my numbers now. v equals square root of 0 squared plus 2 times negative 9.81 times negative 45.5. It should be plus or minus, plus or minus. Oops. Right back. Right back. Go back to the previous slide. Um, okay, 2 times negative 9.81 times negative 45.5 equals 892. Square root of that equals 29.8. So V equals plus or minus. 29.9 meters per second. And that's by. And since it's going down when it hits the ground, it's going to be minus. So I'm going to fill that in in my chart. Negative 29.9 meters per second. Underline it to make sure that we know it's solved. Okay, well we still can't do anything with x. We need to find t now. But we know the initial velocity, the final velocity, and the time. So I'm going to use this equation. Uh, v equals u plus at. And remember, this is in the y direction. If I solve it for t, v minus u equals at. And so then t is equal to v minus u over a. Let's plug in our numbers. v is equal to negative 29.9 minus u, which is 0, over a, negative 9.81. So t ends up just being equal to negative 29.9 over 9.81, or negative 9.81, equals 3.05 seconds. So plug that in, 3.05 seconds. And since I know the time it takes to get to the ground in the uh, y direction, I also know the time in the x direction, 3.05 seconds. So now I can solve for the displacement in the x direction. That's the distance it travels horizontally. So that is going to be, while it's a constant velocity, so vx is equal to sx over t. I don't know why my PowerPoint keeps trying to end the slideshow, but let's just solve this. This becomes a displacement x equals velocity times time. So that's going to be 16.6 .6 meters per second times 3.05. Um, and sx is then going to be, stop doing this PowerPoint, sx equals 16.6 .6 times 3.05, 50.6 meters. 50.6 meters. Plug that in. 50.6 meters. Okay, and that's it. Um, I've solved for everything, so let me just write out my answers. Distance away that it lands, Sx equals 50.6 meters. A time it takes to land, T equals 3.05 seconds. And the uh, final velocity in the y direction and the x direction. Well, in the x direction, our velocity is constant, so it's 16.6 .6 .6 meters per second. And in the y direction, it's negative 29.9 meters per second. Those are my solutions. That's all for projectile motion. Bye.